Hello, fellow truth seekers. I hope you are all doing well. So, I have a new member to the family. Look how cute he is. I found him the night of the new moon in Gemini. He, as you can tell, is tiny. He'd been orphaned. And I even, like, I waited, like, a while after I found him, and, um, I thought that, you know, his mama might come back. But he was even more, uh, he had crawled out of the little hole that I've, I'd found him in, and, uh, he was still very alone and very upset, and I felt of his little back after he was out of the hole, and it was... You could feel his spine like really prickly. He's already like you can tell like there's this that layer that protective layer there, and he's doing so good. He's so cute. He's such a cool little guy. I haven't decided what to name him yet, but how cool, right? Um, I'd really like closed out a big chapter in my life that day so I felt like that was kind of um, a little reward and um, kind of a promise too and I think that applies to all of us right you know that there's good stuff coming in right and but he's 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 a little new you know I'm having to really nurture the little guy you know? <laughs> he's a little preemie he got here early um, but yeah, there's good stuff coming in, guys. And that's just, um, yeah, I think it's a little symbolic gift from the universe. So, cool. All right. So, full moon in Sagittarius. Um, I know y'all have felt these energies. Whew. I've been hit hard by them. And I'm hoping that I'm just getting them early. All right? Because... When I did my cards, my, my layout for the full moon in Sagittarius, uh, I was using the Wild Unknown Archetypes, and I got the Storm with uh, the Underworld as my underlying energy. <laughs> I'm like, all right, woo! <sighs> yeah. I'm behind on things. I apologize for not doing the June monthly readings, but I just, my personal transformation like ramped up. I had that going on and then I got that little guy and it was like, okay, you know, whew, I've got enough going on right now. And I'm, I don't know if I'll go back to the monthly readings or not, to be honest. I feel like, um, I want to try and keep things a little bit more present, right? Keep us in the present. And, um, yeah. And open up for other things, too. There are other things I want to do. And I was kind of getting hemmed in. And with, you know, when you're doing spiritual work as well, it's important to actually, you know, give your... You know, that's, that's a job, right? And I've been kind of making this my top priority and um it just shouldn't be i mean this is a part of my work but um yeah I'm, I'm pulling back a little bit and kind of opening it up for for new possibilities too so cool all right so let's get into the details about this um Full moon and Sagittarius. It's going to be intense, right? The storm, <laughs> the underworld. <laughs> so, uh, the degrees. It's 15 degrees of the moon squaring Mars, which is in turn squaring the sun at 15 degrees. And, you know, of course, the sun, sun and the moon are opposing each other. We've also got Venus in the mix at 12 degrees. So she's also making these hard aspects as well. Not to the exactness as, you know, uh, Mars, Moon, Sun, but she's right there. She's at 12 degrees, right? 15 degrees is the devil card. And we 
are going to feel that uh, tension, that uh, that seduction of the senses, right? We're um, we're definitely going to indulge in that, and that's fine. But we are in Sagittarius, right? So we want to make sure that we are, you know, being moderate, right? Not going too far. Watching that fine line between indulgence and obsession or addiction, right? And, you know, in addition to that, we are going to be actually facing our demons, right? Those aspects of ourselves that we've been ignoring, we've been pretending didn't really mean that much. It's really going to get thrown in our face. <laughs> We're not going to be able to ignore it any longer. Uh, and that's a, a, you know this is so this is all really good and this can just be like things that you've been left undone that really need to be done you know you've it's been easy to put it off right those kind of things we're going to be facing them and um you know wherever the devil is you find strength well strength comes in the guise of uranus eight degrees in Taurus and it is making a sextile to Mercury at nine degrees in Cancer so we have you know we've been in hermit mode and this is going right across the Sun and Venus so you know and Venus is at 12 degrees the hanged man Uranus Mercury the sudden switch the light bulb going off um, you know, a download. However, you know, this this comes, it's going to be quick, it's going to be sudden, and you're going to know it, right? It's going to just light you up, right? Venus and the sun being right there. So, you know, this is uh, giving us the courage, you know, and then that's giving us the courage, too, to stand up to the demon, right? Whatever it is, whatever fear we've we've had, whatever relationship that maybe we've been holding on to that we didn't need to hold on to, like really seeing it clearly and being able, having the courage to, you know, just face it down and finally close out the cycle, right? That's what it's all about. So cool. I think that you know that's the biggest part of what I want to say that didn't take all that long yeah we'll see what comes out in the cards I have a feeling it's going to be um, a bit of a smorgasbord let's see hello my beautiful Sagittarians I hope that you are all doing well my name is Christiana. I will be performing this reading for you today regarding the full moon and Sagittarius. <laughs> this is for sun, moon, rising. So you guys have brought us a doozy. All right, we have the south node in your sign, which is about what we're leaving behind, right? We're changing the bigger picture. All right, we're focusing out. Let's see what we've got here. Ooh, psychic development with personal power at the bottom. Now this is the chakra that needs your most attention during this time period. And this is the third eye chakra. So let's get you an artist card. My intention is that if you so choose, you can do some research on this artist and they will have information to continue to give to you, All right? Your own personal meanings. All right, so what artist? Ooh, a Beethoven, interesting. We have Michelangelo at the bottom. Wow, this is some big stuff, guys. <laughs> Look at that big sky. That's the Sagittarius sky right there. 
All right. So, Ludwig. A wrong note is insignificant. Playing with pa without passion is inexcusable. Listen, destiny is knocking at your door and conduct a symphony in silence. Interesting. Hmm. I'm getting all kinds of um, odd messages from that conduct a symphony in silence. Like... Um, you know, especially with this psychic development thing going on, you know, I feel like, um, gosh, it, like it, you're just going about everyday things and you've got this like <sighs> thing that you're manifesting that you're like, you're working magic doing your everyday things is like what I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, like, you know, washing the dishes and you're like writing this symphony, right? You're working this magic in your head. It's very interesting. Um, and this destiny is knocking at your door. That's a big one, right? There's a lot of exuberance and passion and, and intensity with Beethoven. I love it. And this is the, this is the energy you all are bringing. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Where am I going? Where am I going? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the Moonology deck. We're going to get our main messages from there. And we have full moon and Sagittarius at the bottom of the deck. Step out of your comfort zone, North Node, which, you know, we're going towards Gemini, right? Moving out of Sagittarius towards Gemini. How do we go about that, Sag? <laughs> For Sagittarius, please. Is that all? Okay. <clears throat> Full moon and Sagittarius. What messages do you have for Sag? Okay, there we go. We have hold your vision at the bottom of the deck. We will take a look at all the underlying energies at the end of the reading. Wow, that's a lot. Oh, that north node came out again. Interesting. Um... <laughs> Huh, interesting, okay. Um, what was I gonna say, what was I gonna say? Oh, at the end of the reading, I will take a look at the underlying energies and see what kind of story they have to tell. All right, let's see what we've got here. Okay, get these a little more settled real quick. works well enough, I think. Okay. It's interesting that we have this fixed moon. We have all three out here. We have the cardinal moon, the mutable moon, and the fixed moon at the bottom of the deck. Underneath that, we have a fiery climax approaches. And, you know, that that Mars energy is certainly out there. It's underlying, though, right? We, you know, and we do see it a bit in this mutable moon, right? All these, these waves, right? Everything is kind of up in the air a little bit. But, you know, we have two. We start out here with be bold and make the first move and step out of your comfort zone. So there's this initiatory energy that you need to start something, right? And then you have to be kind of go with the flow about it, all the while holding your final outcome, right? You're going to have to kind of navigate some waves and stay, you know, keep your eye on that bigger picture, the final outcome, right? With this a win-win outcome is forecast. 
So hold the vision, right? Where you're, this is like destiny, right? With this North Node here, you're moving towards your destiny. But you have to kind of, you know, nothing is yet set in stone. So you don't have the whole picture yet, right? And so you're kind of with this new moon in Virgo. I feel like they're asking you to keep an open mind, right? It's right in between two full moons here. Take care of yourself, right? Virgo is all about health. And with this Libra moon here, I think, no, it'll be a while for that. Okay, at any rate. <laughs> Um, to prepare you for this. And this is like, you know, what are you starting? What? It doesn't have to be this new moon, but, um, or this full moon. But there's something that you're starting that is going to prepare you, right? And it's going to bring more justice. How can you be of service, right? How can you bring more justice into the world? And I do, you know, I guess because of this full moon in Sagittarius and this Michelangelo um, card. And it, it's interesting. We have no compromise is a good compromise. Whereas, you know, Libra and Virgo, they are about compromise and balance, right? A time to give rather than take right beside this Libra. So there's this push and pull going on. Wow, we have Charles and Ray Eames. This is my counterpart <laughs> card. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, it is haunting us, isn't it? Um, but also, this become ill with unhealthy perfectionism, right? Virgo... They're all about the details, right? There's this balance that needs to be set between this new moon in Virgo and the full moon in Sagittarius, right? Looking at the bigger picture rather than uh, looking at the details. And maybe with this, you know, there are going to be more, there's more information coming in as we approach the new moon eclipse, right? that's going to help us better know where we're going. For now, make it big picture, right? Um, and I do see this playing out, you know, on a wide scale as well, right? Um, we are Move, stepping out of our comfort zone and being bold, right? And re making waves on a big scale. Yeah, and this is all in service of the greater good of a more just world, right? Just saying. I see it. Yeah. Standing up, family, right? We're all in this together. Hmm. Interesting. Listening is underneath that. All right? Listening to other people's opinions. Really listen. Forcing others to listen. All right? We're grand. Oh, wow. Grounding and love underneath that. Ah, oh, beautiful. Yeah, coming from a place of love. Okay. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Keep going back to the light seers. Or Sagittarius, please. You have a very colorful spread. Hmm. This 
not all these cards are, you know, there's not really a whole lot of color in them. So yeah, it's going to be colorful for sure. <laughs> Alright, King of Swords, interesting. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like that's the way it's supposed to go. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything that was flipped. Okay. We have Seven of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Oh, with the sun underneath that. That's beautiful. Nine of Wands. That's, that's the moon in Sagittarius right there. And then the Ace of Pentacles. Beautiful. The Magician. Wow. Six of Wands. Beautiful. All right. I like it, Sag. Hmm. Look at the color progression here. It's like we start out clear and then things get cloudier and cloudier until like it's almost like darkness into the dawn, right? And wow. So I see you here as the King of Swords in the beginning, right? Very, see, yeah, this is like looking at things from that, you know, higher perspective, that wider view, and using all of the faculties here, right? We see all these, the owl, the bat, the crow, which is the messenger from the other side, right? And he's sitting on this sword, the truth, and you, you're seeing it with this dragonfly. You're see, cutting through the illusion. You see where you need to go, and you're ready to act on it here. And you do, right? You know, you're following that truth. You're taken off. You're going into the unknown, into all of these, um, you know, straight into our fears, right? You're going right into it. And on the other side of that, right, is the Knight of Cups. And it's like, and we see this message here. And it might be that this is even, has been given at this point, right? You give the message, you're scared of how it's going to turn out, but, you know, just getting it off your chest, right? Moving from your heart, getting out of your head. Um, as I do, you know, with the Knight of Swords and the Knight of Cups, we also have this King of Swords here. There's been a lot of, in the head, looking at things logically, when perhaps, you know, a little bit of heart was needed. And, um, with this, you know, I do see reunion here. I just can't not see it. Um, it's going to be, it's going to feel good, right? It might send, send you down a bit of a memory lane, but then we all, you know, very closely right after we're looking into the future, right? This is where the past meets the future, right here, right? And the Queen of Wands, this is holding power, right? She has it right in the palm of her hand. These are all those little candles that you you've you've lit and little manifestations that are coming in and you know it's like she's been practicing right she's been practicing lighting these candles right they're like a little smaller and now she can light it right in her hand she's gained so much power so much perspective that she can light it right in her hand Right, we've got, I feel like it's dusk to dawn right here behind her. I mean, 
This is beautiful colors. I mean, this is on the head, you know, which is clear here, but we kind of had to clear on where you're going, but how to get there was kind of foggy, right? We're, we're seeing a lot of fog and stuff, but it all clears by the end. Beautiful. All right, let's get a piece of art. We will get closing guidance and then we'll take a look at the underlying energies. All right. For Sagittarius, right there, okay, to the right, hmm, Melee, interesting, by Julian Schnabel, that is, huh, oh, the surface of this unusual and expressive portrait is made from bits of broken china to which the image has been painted. Beautiful. You know, it's uh, <laughs> repurposing, which I love, right? Recycling. Um, it makes me think of, you know, the Chinese have this uh, thing where if something's broken, they paint it, the cr they fix it, and the crack is painted in gold. It's highlighted in gold. And... You know, it's like all those broken pieces. Instead of just throwing them out, right? We're fixing them. We're making them beautiful again. Beautiful. Um, I see the mountains here in the back too, right? Hold your vision. Hold your vision, right? We get the vision right here in the beginning. <laughs> it just amazes me. <laughs> and there's this, you know, um, bigger picture. Like, a, you know, to me, this person looks like they're from a, a different country. Um, some of you could be thinking of traveling, but I just feel like the interconnectedness, right? Hmm. Cool. All right, I'm going to go to the archetype deck to get the closing guidance. Sagittarius, please. Sagittarius, regarding the full moon in Sagittarius. What card for Sagittarius? I think I'm going to pull one. Nope. Okay. We can't have all those. That first one out. <laughs> all right, guys. I'll just show you real quick. The forest, the womb. Oh, yeah. The storm, the pilgrim. The warrior, the sustain, uh, the vision, the sustainer. Wow, fixed vision, right? That is crazy. You're gonna be, you know, you're you're gonna have to be willing to fight for it. You know, this is a spiritual pilgrimage right here. Um, in the forest, you know, the storm being reborn as what I'm feeling with this womb, like. All that we're going through at this point in time is just to, you know, of course, we're creating something too, right? And it's wedged right in between the forest and the storm. That pressure is really creating something beautiful that we're going to see what we got here. Oh, the kiss. <laughs> Oh gosh, that's it. So that's the prize, right? Oh well, with the self at the bottom of the deck, beautiful, because we've been on this journey of self. Wow, that's gorgeous. Love it. Okay, where's the book? Let's read from the kiss, number sixty.
The touch, the chemistry, the sex. Before a first kiss, the air is electrified. Each breath is alive with possibility and magic. What will their lips be like? Their tongue? Do they want me in return? The archetypal energy of the kiss is a heightened sensation of merging with other, of letting in what was moments ago separate. Two become one. It is risky, but beautiful business. These moments forever change us as we move past the solitary self toward union and acceptance. This card suggests true intimacy is around the corner, which requires bravery and surrender. Wow, beautiful. When the kiss takes a non-human form, it may be experienced as touching the sacred, hearing a whisper, or being graced by a divine being. You will recognize the presence of the kiss by cold chills and an awakening of the heart. So it says, when light, sensual expressiveness, merging, inviting. When dark, neediness, pressure, dominance, disrespect. Go deeper. Andy Warhol's 1963 film, Kiss. We also have intimacy is multi-layered and requires our reflection. Revisit what you consider to be sensual, taboo, acceptable, shameful. And then write down the story of your first kiss. What was changed in that moment? Beautiful, beautiful, where the past meets the future. Wow, I love this, guys. Okay, let's take a look at these underlying energies. Because you've been doing the work, guys. And Spirit is with you. I can't believe this. And James Brown is underneath that. And he's like, you know, I feel good. -na 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 -na. Like I knew that I would. <laughs> and then that is over top of Louise Bourgeois. And this card right here is all about the heart knot. This is all about that exploration. She was coming out a lot a while ago. And, you know, all those little hurts that have caused us to withdraw. And we're healing. We've healed those wounds and now we're feeling good. And now we are, you know, coming in, you know, oh, man, shoo. Okay, hold your vision. <laughs> Seven of Pentacles, what you've been growing is, is coming to fruition and personal power, right? That self, you are empowering yourself. You are being gifted by the universe. Beautiful. All right, guys, I mean, hold that vision, right? What is it? What have you been working on? Go after it, right? Beautiful. <laughs> and I, I just now noticed we've got, oh, wow. The heart, the animal. And I mean, look, it's got the same like that's Virgo too. <sighs> the sensualness, the heart. We've had that dead end, right? God. Okay, I'm gonna quit after this. Oh God, I swear. Stop. We've got the prayer, the mother, the gem, and the poet, right? All that pressure is, is what creates the gem, what we've been creating, right? My God, the trip to the dark side. You know, we come back with beauty. It's all been on a prayer. Beautiful. God, I love it. All right. All right, guys. It's coming. My God, it's coming. You guys, 
This is beautiful, beautiful energy. And y'all have been working, you know, we saw the beginnings of it, right? Back with the full moon in Libra. Maybe that's what this is saying. I don't think it's necessary, you know, this new moon being here. I feel I've been seeing it over and over again, like that this new moon eclipse that's happening. You know, of course, this the work that we do through this period is going to, you know, I guess maybe affect, right? How we, but look at that, guys. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Go for it. Because we're making beautiful magic. Beautiful magic. Beautiful. All right, guys. I hope that that resonated. I really, really do. <laughs> I hope that it helped. If so, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, share. Until next time, much love.